Hey Half Video Audio Stuff, welcome back. If you are a videographer and you like to travel and also keep your rig really nice and light, then the Manfrotto B3 Live could be perfect for you. However, it's not perfect and I do have a few niggles, so stay tuned, I'm gonna let you know everything you need to know before you purchase. Uh, what is it? It's a decent quality, lightweight tripod with a fluid head. This is a really, really big deal because I feel like for so long there have been so many options for photographers for travel tripods, but really not that many for videography. I've had a beefy Manfrotto video tripod for years and it's been amazing, apart from its weight and its size. So when this arrived on the scene, I had to grab it with both hands. Um, what features does it have? Most importantly, it's lightweight at only 1.8 kilos. And that's amazing, it's say if you're going somewhere on foot to film or if you're having to carry something around all day, it's just brilliant for the back. But it has a maximum payload of only four kilos, so that might limit the gear that you decide to bring with you. So could be a trade-off for some. My rig with my A7S II, an external monitor, two beefy batteries, my heaviest lens is probably gonna be the bulk of that 4K. So you just need to keep that in mind when planning your shoot. Secondly, lots of functionality. And this is one of the best things about this tripod. It has almost all of the functionality of my big tripod. So in terms of features, you're really not losing much by going with this smaller option, but more about that in a bit. Thirdly, and it's another big deal, and it's that fluid video head, and panning, tilting, general use is kind of a joy to use with this setup. Like I said, I do have niggles, and I will get to them later. Fourthly, the legs of the tripod are in four sections, and they're the kind of the clip release rather than the screw release, which everyone seems to have a different opinion about. I prefer the clip style myself, but they feel solid and work as they should. Something else to bear in mind is this tripod extends up to 151 centimeters, not as high as some, but I think probably fine for general shooting. In case you need to know, it comes with this nice usual pouch, which you can sling over your shoulder. A couple of things, uh, there's no additional pocket for your pan bar, which is odd. And also compared to the case that my big tripod comes in, this uh, strap doesn't have the rub rubberized feel. I know you can't have everything, but it's so handy It means it just doesn't slip around on your shoulder um, So that would have been nice, but never mind still nice pouch. How is it built? Right here are the good points It's an aluminium construction which is good for weight and it also has all the kind of nice high quality plastics and rubbers where they're meant to be all in all it feels nice as we've come to expect from Manfrotto. The fluid head is very, very light and low mass. Um, it feels like a newly designed component and it's got nice action. As with my other Manfrotto tripod, it's a fluid head sat on top of a ball head, which means you can level it brilliantly and there's a spirit level as well. As I'm so used to leveling my camera in this way, I think if it didn't have it, I would cry. The way that you level the head is really, really nice and it's really, it's brilliantly designed. The only thing I've noticed is that when you go to tighten it up, you can keep an eye on the spirit level and you think you got it right, but then as you tighten it, it sort of shifts out the way. And if, please tell me, if any of you have experienced this, do let me know. If there's a fix, great. If not, I don't know. At the top of each leg, there's a switch so you can get the legs into the position you want them. There's off, which means you can fold it up and put it away. There's 25 degree angle and 51 degrees. The tripod feet are also really nice. They're just perfectly rubbery and grippy and great. And now for the bad points. When you fully extend the legs, the very last section, the section with the smallest diameter, are, for want of a better word, spindly. And I know that's how it has to be just because they're trying to fit things into a certain size and package. Um, it's just when you load your gear up, it does feel a little bit dodgy sometimes, but I'm sure it's fine. Secondly, I'm really not a fan of the tilt dial. And that's only because it's positioned so closely to the center column that you can't really tighten it enough. It feels like that way anyway. And I don't exactly have sausage fingers. Thirdly, the pan dial, I think, possibly could be better as well. What I like to do when I'm panning is to tighten it slightly and add some resistance. 
so as to try and get a smoother pan. What happens on, in this case though is if it's slightly too tight, it will just unscrew the whole head and you've lost your shot. Lastly, due to the relatively low payload of this tripod, I really feel like it's a good idea to sort of balance the tripod in a similar way that you would something like a Steadicam. I know that if I've got a really heavy lens on the front and I haven't tightened the tilt dial enough, it's going, it's going forward. So it's totally my error. Just bear that in mind. You really need to just make sure that it's balanced on the top. Make sure it's not front heavy or back heavy and just tighten that tilt as much as you can. Setting up and packing down is, as you would expect, super quick and easy, making it really convenient when you just want to get your camera out quickly and get it on the tripod. Is it good value for money? It's functional, it's lightweight, it's well built, and basically one of your only options if you're looking for a compact solution for run and gun and travel videography, unfortunately. So I would say if you're a one man band or if you're really just trying to keep your size and weight down, this kind of is an essential that you pretty much just got to buy. So your opinion, Harv? So overall, it's a really nice product that's far from perfect, but is completely necessary if you want to go out and have a light rig. So uh, that's my conclusion. So I really hope that helped you and I hope that answered all the questions you had. If you have any more, feel free to pop them below and I'll do my best to answer them. I'm in the comments as much as possible. And as usual, let's help each other out and shoot better video together. Take care, I'll see you next time.